Welcome back to video five. In video five, we kind of going to have a chat about um, functional testing. And we already had a chat about, you know, performance testing and how performance testing can help us uh, to determine our goal and our performance, um, the way that we need to do our testing, the way that we need to do the testing on performance, and the way that we need to do the testing on functional testing as well. So, um, like we've gone through a couple of things um, in the past and we are we are about to get near to the end of the theory section before we actually start working with uh, you know the programs to actually do the physical testing and this is quite important the theory section is quite important because you know if you don't understand the basics behind testing then you know testing is not going to be feasible so uh, the one thing that we're going to chat about is uh, functional testing and functional testing is much different than performance testing because you know as we know that performance testing was more um, about how the actual process of performance works I mean if I go back uh, to this one you can see that you know it's about um, the requirements and analyst uh, design code um, test and you know implement and, and and you know deploy and in test you've got functionality testing which we're having a look at now and you've got your performance release and production environment setup testing so you know um, there was a lot of things that we had a look at we had a look at proof of concept performance project you know all that kind of stuff to actually know how the the basics behind performance testing is going to work so in this uh, video we're more going to chat about you know um, the actual functionality the functionality testing behind it and not in essence the performance testing behind it which in essence is two uh, you know different things um, so you know two totally different things and that's what you got to bear in mind and normally uh, two different um, two different entities would actually do the testing not one entity would do the testing so functional testing and, the, and what I wrote there uh, the first one is um, quality assurance testing and when we look at quality insurance testing I'm just gonna go and uh, do this uh, quality insurance testing uh, is basically what we go and how we can test the quality of the uh, the program so let's say that we uh, we are Google right and we are going to launch a new um, mailing system so first you know the development took place and if I go back to this you know the development the design took place that's done um, now we need to do the code the code is done so now it's now it's part of the testing phase right and now we as in quotation marks Google need to go and test if everything is working properly so the performance guys are going to do the performance testing and we are going to do the uh, functionality testing so if I go back quality assurance testing is probably one of the most important things and when we talk about quality insurance and and you can always get this in as QA um, it refers to the engineering activities implemented in the quality of the system right so so that the requirements for the product or the service will be fulfilled so you know you will always have certain requirements right and you have to fulfill the requirements um, and for that to be measured we will go quality assurance is this quality assurance 100% or not right so um, it is systematically measurement comparison with the standard monitoring of the process and the association feedback loop that confers ever uh, error prevention so um, we trying to we trying to figure out with the functionality and the quality assurance testing is will there be any error in the way that the layout right the design right was supposed to be is there any differ from let's say we had wireframes or we had certain design elements from the designing team is there any difference is it working properly as it was supposed to so quality assurance and you know quality assurance doesn't just stop at programming I mean everything goes through quality assurance most like if you buy a new car right uh, that thing went through a couple of quality insurance testing so it's pretty much the same uh, the same principle so functional testing is quality assurance process and the type and it's like a type of black box testing right um, so when we talk about black box testing we are kinda of referring to um, the method the software takes uh, the, the method that the software testing is taking place uh, so black box testing is a method of software testing that examines the functionality of an application 
So if we look at our mail application quotation marks Google is going to launch, they will do black box testing with the functional testing because it's what the software does, how it's working and how it's taking people from one page to another. So black box testing, and I'm just going to go and do that so that we can have emphasis on it. Black box testing is how does it work? Um, so that is the important thing about black box, black box testing, right? Um, the method of black box testing um, can be applied to virtually every level, right? So you, you have um, you have a unit integration system and acceptance is the way that the testing normally works. So you've got unit integration system and acceptance. It is typically uh, comprises most of all the higher level testing, but can also be dome um, domain to unit testing itself. So. It, normally, when you do black box testing, you would kind of do it in a essence in the whole project, right? You will go, okay, uh, let me give you a good example so that you can understand this. I will go, okay, uh, the mailing uh, application, right, um, has got basically, you know, big one thing. What, what is the main thing? It's getting mail in and it's getting mail out or taking mail out. So is that gonna work so let's start with black box testing and the overall units from getting mail in to getting mail out right so okay that is working so now we can take our black box methodology and we can actually concentrate on you know key points like is it sending a mail correctly is it sending the mail correctly to the correct recipient so do you see how black box testing can be used in the overall unit and how the black box testing can be used in specific units inside of the whole um, of the whole program or application that's being functionality testing, right? So that's black box testing. Now coming back to functional testing, right? Um, so functional testing are tested by feeding the input and the examination um, of examining the input and then having a look at the output, right? The reason why I'm saying you giving the input and having a look at the output is kind of like, uh, okay, so let's see if this mail gets sent. That's you inputting, right? Now you are observing and seeing, okay, it's working. That's the output of the actual functional testing. So um, in essence, functional testing is looking at the functionality. Is the functionality of the application doing what it's supposed to, right? Because if it's not doing what it's supposed to, then I'm going back, then we need to go back to our code section, right? So then you gotta go back to the drawing board. So it is important so uh, to do the overall testing, the functionality testing, and it kind of works in steps. And that's why I went and said, okay, well, there's five steps that we need to have a look at. But before we have a look at, I want to make sure that we understand this properly. Um, functional testing differs from system testing in, in that functional testing um, refers to a program that's being checked, right? A program that's making sure that the functionality is working. Whereas system testing is connotated to performance testing, um, but system testing can also be um, database testing, it can be software testing, it can be integration testing, it can be acceptance testing, right? So there's a lot of testing out there, uh, testing methodologies. So you need to understand that functional testing has got nothing to do with system testing and um, it differs quite a lot. Um, so when we go back to what we've chat about, it's like performance testing is one thing and functional testing is something else. And the reason why we're going through this is so that you can understand that, so that you can know um, in your testing knowledge that, okay, there's two different entities. There's uh, performance testing, and then there's um, functional testing. And performance testing, as we said in the previous videos, can either be referred to as NFR or NFT. NFR is non-functional uh, requirements, and NFT is non-functional testing phase. So you would see that, um, you know, when working with, with performance testing, there's no, no um, connotation to functional testing, not at all. Okay, so, but getting back to functional testing, the five steps which is most important is step number one, <clears throat> identification. I wrote it down for you right there. Um, and the thing about identification, let's, let's have a chat about it. Uh, five steps to look at uh, for identification. 
So, uh, 